I think it's time that we get into the n particles now. So today we are going to be talking about what is n particles inside of Maya. And n particles is basically a particle system inside of Maya. Before the in the earlier version of Maya, we had a native particle system, but over the years, Autodesk has improved the n particles in many ways. So today we are going to be talking about how we can create some amazing particle simulation using in particles and so on so first thing you have to do is if you're in the modeling menu you have to switch to the fx menu similarly when we switch to fx menu when we are working with in cloth this time we are talking about the in particle so if you go to the in particle the first thing you'll notice is that we have two types of emitter the first one is a legacy emitter and the second one is a normal emitter now this is the same thing uh, that you get uh, if you're working with constraints like you have the in constraints and then you have the legacy constraints as well the legacy rigid and active pass passive body as well then you have the in cloth passive body so the only difference between both of these are this is a bit of an older version of n particle and this is a new version it has its own solver which is it has a built-in nucleus like similarly you get with nCloth and this does not so if I create an emitter from the new particle system let me just you will see that you get two things the first thing is the nucleus your solver and the second thing is the emitter if I play this you will see we have particle emitting if I take the other one which is this one legacy one you only get a single emitter which does not contains any nucleus so if i just yeah if i just play this you'll notice that all these particles are moving in uniform way there is no gravity to pull them down on the other hand this particle system is going downwards because it contains the nucleus a solver that has the gravity all right so let's begin so we are going to be working a lot with the new particle system the original one this one so the first thing you have to do is you can click on create emitter and you can also go into this checkbox and you can change something if you want to create a certain type of particle system like for example we have emitter type where you can create a directional volume or a omni particle now you can always go back and change it if you don't like you don't have to like fix anything right now but if you choose to do so you can choose it from here as well and later on you can change it if you don't like it anyways then you can change your speed and randomness and so on so you just hit create and then you'll have something like this so you get two things from here the first one is the emitter which is this one and the second one is the nucleus so uh, i'm gonna bring this up and hit play let's go to the first frame and then you have your particles falling down all right the first thing you'll notice is that we have the same parameters and uh, settings that we had when we were creating the in particles. You can always go back and change this omnidirectional surface or volume in the directional. You can basically specify what direction you want your particles to go down. Like you can change the overall direction here. So this is direction X, Y and Z. So I can make this 0, 0 and I can make this 5 and it will go in that certain direction. Uh, by default you get omni which is this one and then you have surface in surface case if you're using a kind of a surface or a different object then you can use this then you have curve if you have created any curve sorry yeah curve then you can use this particle system to emit from that curve as well and then you have volume which will create a, this simple volume box if you play this then the particle will be generated from the volume so we are going to stick to omni and uh, this is what we have i'm going to keep the speed and everything to random and so on all right so the main thing we have is the particle shape and this is where all of the magic happens and you'll see that we have a lot of settings here and don't worry if you don't understand anything because slowly we're going to be diving into and understanding what each and everything does with time with more videos so the first thing that you see is the count and the second thing is the lifespan now at this point particles are just emitting and not dying at all that means they will live on forever and forever so what we what say if i want something like they should die at a certain time or certain point so we have a constant in a lifespan mode constant basically means one constant value you can have something like maybe a five and after five they will start to die I think 5 is too much. Let's keep it to 2. Yeah, so there you go. 
if you hit one then in one second so that means 24 frames after that they will start to die and there you go so you can change a constant value totally depends on you and then you have the random range so if you want to see the changes or anything that you have done to your end particles you have to go to your first frame again play back the whole thing similarly you have to do with the end cloth all right so the lifespan will be one and here i can see all right 75 randomness and i can change the seed if i don't like the overall look and from here you'll start to see that some particles are dying i think the randomness is a bit too much i'm going to make this 15 and go back and uh, now you'll start to see more particles are dying soon let's make it something more reasonable and easier to see all right so there you go now even though all the particles are dying around one but there are still some random i can make this two and you'll see some particles live longer some particles are dying too soon so this is the overall randomness you get from using a random range which is i think pretty nice so i'm going to keep it to live forever for now just for demonstration purpose then you have the particle size and here if you'll play and if i change the particle size you won't see much happening the reason is because we are using a different particle which we cannot change our radius so for that we have to go into i think it's in yeah shading and here you'll see we have set our particle render type to points we can change it to sphere if you want to visualize your particle as spheres and from here you can change the particle size as well so i can make this somewhere like 100 and there you go so now you have something like this let's say if you want some randomness in this size what you can do is you can come over here and you can play around with this graph and you can change the overall i can make this smooth i can make this smooth as well and i can bring this around here let me just make this smooth and let's make this smooth as well and from here you can uh, do something like this maybe to create some randomness and you'll notice that even though we have changed the graph we don't see any change happening and the reason is because the radial scale input has been set to off instead of off we want randomized id and then you'll see our graph takes place so now you have random size particle randomness is always good for your design it adds more into your scene instead of uniformity you'll get more randomness which is kind of believable all right so the next thing is you can change the particle size from here then we have collision right now it's colliding uh, if you have some colliders you can also set it to self collide if you want the particles to be collided with each other that means if i play this particles are colliding with each other as well so let's say if i take something like a simple plane let's bring this down and we can scale this up so we have something like this i can select this and i can play this now there are two ways to create a simple collider either you can select your end particles shift select your plane and you can go here and um, you can basically make collide or simple way is basically selecting this and hitting create passive collider and if i play this now there you go so the particles are emitting they are colliding and if you think the collision is not accurate if there is some kind of gap you can also go into your solver display and check collision thickness so right here we can see we have a bit more collision thickness which we can again change to something a bit less all right that seems good and now you'll see that we have something like this so if you don't want it to be your self colliding particles you can change that uh, i think it is more natural that the particles are colliding with each other but yes if you want more bounciness you can add some more bounciness here and now you'll see that we get more bounciness we can add stickiness to it if you want the particles to be sticking to the floor let's add more bounciness Alright, so there you go and the particle will stay on the plane as long they are on the plane after that they will start to go down into the deep space let me just rotate this a bit all right all right so there you go so this is how 
you make something collide with n particles okay so here you can change the overall dynamics we'll get into more of these parameters once we move on and create more stuff with n particles uh, but for the basic understanding i think it is well known what uh, dynamics does so if i play this now we have something like this if you want to control more drag or add more mass to your particles you can simply do that we have deal with the same thing in when we were working with n cloth when we created dynamic cloths and using some constraint we had the same thing drag damp and mass so i think most people already know we can increase the drag we can slow them down and so on to get this kind of effect pretty fun and easy way to create some amazing particles all right all right so we have force field generation where you can pretty much create some force field we'll get into fields and everything then you have rotation but rotation won't work with the sphere <clears throat> then we'll get into the shading and here you'll see we have a couple of options for the particle render type here you can also make these sprites uh, basically sprites are camera facing cards and then you have um, sphere we'll keep it to sphere and we can change the opacity and so on now if we go down here we have something called as color in the color i can simply change the color of this particle so let's make it red and we can add more markers here i'm going to select this and let's make it yellow select this green and cyan let's bring this here let's add blue as well and let's bring this out let's try to make some space for the last color and we'll select purple as well all right so you'll notice that even though we have changed a lot of color we only see one color and the reason is because the color has been set to constant so we'll say randomize it and then you'll have something like this pretty colorful particles going on and uh, maybe we can create a simple container and let's go back delete the face and from here we can extrude this out to create some thickness and that's it i'm going to select this let's create a passive collider and let's play this again so now we have something like this now if you think the particle generation is a bit too slow what you can do is you can go to your emitter and you can increase the particle rate so here as you can see we have the 100 rate per particle second so we can change this to 500 to get more particles and now we have more particles so this is pretty interesting and i will wait till the container is full And there you go so this is how you can play around with n particles there are a lot of cool stuff that you can do with n particles which slowly we are going to be covering everything uh, now last few things you can also play around with the nucleus you can change the overall dynamics if you don't like the gravity you can turn the gravity off you can add some wind you can add some wind noises if you want similarly you get the same solver that you get for the in cloth so you have something like this if you want you can use that as well apart from that if you don't want let me just go to my nucleus i'm going to turn off the wind here so we just have something like this what you can do is you can also use a different fields and solver like you can select this and go to field and solver and you can use something like a turbulence and increase the magnitude and you'll get something like this so you can use a lot of different things with n particles to play around with more better stuff so try exploring more of n particles try to get something out of n particles this was just a basic introduction to get you a basic idea what you can do with n particles what can be done and play around with it and in the next video we'll see how we can create more interesting stuff with n particles all right that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video